Hello, in this video I'm going to go over and analyze some of Kirkst's Bastion routes. Um, it's pretty well known that Kirkst is one of the best, if not the best, at routing Bastions uh, in actual runs. There are people who are f obviously faster in um, practice maps and stuff like that, but Kirkst has the best situational awareness and speed when it comes to Bastion routing, in my opinion, out of all runners for RSG. Uh, so let's get into it. I went over 10 hours of VODs, and I think there were about maybe 15 to 20 Bastion routes that he did, uh, which is pretty good, um, especially how, with how hard he's resetting. Most of them are sub-3 Bastion enters. Anyway, uh, I'll get started with this first one. This looks like a bridge. Yep. And he's entering from the back. This is an interesting decision because he could have risked going around front for a little bit faster. Um, and it looked like because there's soul sand here, it would have paid off. But it's only a five second time loss, if that. Could have used his magma there to build up so that he doesn't have to use it later. Could be pie ring. Um, during this gold split, or mining the gold. Uh, he may know where the fortress is, as it's pretty common for Crooks to, because he resets quite hard, so he may know where the fortress is. Doesn't do the hoglin skip, which is fine. Oh, he's doing Ella's hole. Okay. Um, this isn't bad. He, there's a few unnecessary blocks in Ella's hole. It's a little bit outdated. Better than dip, obviously. Um, doesn't use an auto funnel. There's a video on my channel as well as a few others uh, for auto funnels for dip. Um, in my totally unbiased opinion, I do believe mine is the best. He didn't break the gold block coming out of the right shoulder, which is a bit interesting. It's a bit faster. It doesn't get you any more piglins, but it's a bit faster for the piglins to pathfind. Shouldn't have taken that damage there. Um, wasn't his fault. There may have been something he could do, but it's, it's negligible damage. Should be Pyrang while leading the chests, I think. Um, he's doing that a little bit. Could have done a little better. If I'm Crooks right here, with how hard he's resetting, I'm prob I probably reset once I saw no obby. Doesn't have a huge amount of piglins, but he gets obby, so it's fine. Yeah, I'm, he only has four pearls. This is a reset for me. If I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm resetting for much less than Crooks, but if I'm resetting for a sub-10, this is a reset. Four is far. I guess he's just warming up, maybe. There's only about, maybe, there's, there's pretty low chance of him getting good trades right now, yeah. Because he only had like 20 gold, he had to get Abby and Pearls. On to the next Bastion. Uh, that's not it. One twenty-five. Okay, so he sees it's single triple. He's going to obviously be playing it since this is not great pace. This is pretty bad pace for him. Uh, it's right. Single triple, which isn't great. You'd really rather middle. Um, it's better than left, though. So Doesn't have a lot of food, doesn't have armor. He doesn't want to get hit here. And he lucks out. There's no piglins up there. Uh, I think he should break the gold block before breaking that block to let the pigs from above in. 
um, just so that he can get the other pigs moving faster, or rather earlier. I don't know why he takes four, you only really need one so that you can loot a chest and then, in case there are any pigs stuck somewhere. Good job pie jarring earlier. Um, a lot of runners aren't pie jarring this early. Doesn't get obby. Depending on how far the forward is, this may be a reset. Considering how low odds he is of rolling trades in obby. If he gets less than 5 here, yeah, he's, this is definitely a reset. He needs two stacks of Abby now, because each stack is four to six. Yeah, this is why you should have reset. This is not looking great. I don't even know if he has pearls. Let's see. Yeah, he has pearls. Yep, he's resetting. Next one is at 202.30. This looks like it could be bridge. Nope, it's treasure. So he knows he needs extra blocks. Because it's treasure, you generally need more blocks, especially if you're playing it from this low. Doing a good job with movement right now. That was a good clutch. So zombified piglins there means you're not getting any piglins from the lower treasure area in all likelihood. So yeah, I'm not I'm not getting that gold, I'm just rushing the ramparts and playing something safer like Ninja Brain or Lob Brain. Uh, he plays his Crook's variation of Boomer, which is fine. He plays it very, very well. Um, throws down a lot of ingots, which is fine because they're pick trading down there. It slows them down a little bit. Uh, this auto funnel is not good. You should be shifting over the block. So he wastes his shovel there, which could be, especially as he's in, I think he's in SSV. Um, he will prob he may need that shovel in the future. For Boomer, you do want to have the gold on the outside of the hole, the side closest towards the outside of the bastion. Uh, that way they can see it a little easier. Now he's he's got twenty Abby in his mind right now. Yep, definitely he's gonna keep trading it. No. Wow. So that's the. A lot of runners would support this. Um, I guess if I guess because it's treasure, you don't know where the fort is. Oh, he does know where the fort is. So yeah, that's it. Could come back to bite him, but I'm just focusing on the bastion route right now. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a mistake. It, takes an average of, what, six seconds to get that much obby. He only needed one. Next is at 303.20. This could be stables or housing. Looks like stables. Yep. So he doesn't see triple. It could still be right triple or whatever that opposite side is. So that would be left triple actually. I would probably try and force the triple if he doesn't already know it's um, a bad rampart, top rampart. But um, I guess gap is. An acceptable play. So he's recognized a bad gap. I don't remember which side he was from. This is probably a reset at this point. 
Especially because you're playing Gap and you don't have. I don't think he has Hobby. Yep, double bad. Triple, triple. Next route is at 359.30. He has plenty of food coming into this, so it's definitely going to be playing this faction a little bit risky. Might throw down a little less gold to speed up the piglins. Let me speak to a manager. What seems to be the problem? You're a Sorry for the delay. Anyway, a lot, we've seen a trend, uh, a lot of these routes that I think he should be resetting on, he's not resetting, um, I don't know if that's because I think to, he's, he should reset harder just in general, or if that's because he's resetting lightly on the Bastion, but, yeah, he's playing out some slow Bastions, considering his average is probably just under three minutes, if not far under three minutes. Uh, there's a block you can place in treasure if you if you get good at it. Um, I'll see if I can load up a bastion right now. Uh, it's a bit tricky to jump, and I haven't entirely learned it yet. But you can do, once you get to here, you can do something like this, and this, and then jump. Obviously you're doing it all in one jump for full speed. Just speeds up the pathing a little bit. It hasn't been thoroughly tested. Yeah, I can't even do it. You know, like that or something. Anyway, uh, Crux is probably good enough to be able to learn that fairly quickly. And it may be worth it, uh, but that still needs further testing. He doesn't break the lower block. I don't think he ever does. Um, it's a little bit risky, I guess, because um, you'll have piglins on your butt. He's low on health, but this isn't a problem because he has nine carrots and I guess gold to maybe make golden carrots. Speaking of golden carrots, um, especially in Bastions, you want to craft quickly as there are a bunch of golden materials you need to craft. I guess I would recommend the Vietnamese macro and just using Vietnamese in general. Uh, CT, who is very smart, recommends it. I have not tried it yet. Looks like he's... Those look like divine... No, those aren't... Are those divine cords? Yeah, they look like divine cords. They look like high roll though. He's got 20 obby, so divine is a little less useless. It's a little less useful. And I think he's leaving, you know, yeah, he might be leaving on 11 pearls. Oh wait, no, he doesn't have 11 pearls. Anyway, uh, that was a pretty quick split. Uh, everything played very, very well. That's his, one of his strengths is treasure. Uh, well, yeah, I think that's his strongest bastion, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Alright, on to a different bog. Let me see, I think it was this one. Yep. Stables. Yep, this is stables. And he's electing not to play gap as he or electing to play gap as he sees two bad ram two bad ramparts. Meaning only one in third chance, that's a bad gap. Pace is still fine, he gets 10 obby in that chest. I think, it might not have been 10. And a good gap, so that's that was pretty much his last chance. He does this, um, looks like might be X surfing. Um, or some sort of head hitter tech that I don't know about. I know Wilby has a video on Sable's head hitters or something. That I have not looked into much. 
but he plays the hole just how I do. I place a few more blocks if I have them, and he does have blocks. I don't think he does the will-be lava placement, which he usually does. Um, however, I, I think this was smart, though, because he did not hear any piglins uh, coming down still. Pygar's early. Does a smart Pygar. He knows it's that way. And now he's just waiting for pearls and fire as and string. So he has this very well set up for a gap run. Not getting the trades, but um, because he's not getting pearls, he's probably going to leave with 20 obby. Unless he gets really, really quick pearls and string. Uh, he should be crafting beds right now. Oh wait, no, he doesn't have beds. Um, doesn't even have anchors yet. He's doing a good job organizing his inventory. Yeah, he has pretty much nothing to do. Maybe Pearl Hang. Something uh, Turks doesn't do quite as often as other runners, from what I've seen. Um, yeah, so if he gets Pearls here, he's probably leaving without 20 Abby, but he does get 20 Abby. Doesn't have enough for any explosives right now. Which means you know, he has three beds to start off with, which. Um, Something that's overlooked in Bastion's lot is context. It's something that's very important to take into account as you have to decide your route based on context and how high role you want to play based on the pace, how many beds you have, it goes into uh, how much gold you want to trade. He is not getting the trades right now. This is probably a reset scene. Just because of how low probability it is. It's not how long it's going to take, it's how low probability it is that he gets the trades. He can get rid of some of those fire res. Yep, that's the reset. Trades are done. On to the next route. It's unfortunate that that was a fast one. Okay, he's coming into a treasure on high ground. This is a good situation, especially if your crook's really good context right now. Um, he's got blocks, I think, unless those are his only wood, which it. Pretty much is, so he's got a few blocks to spare. Uh, he offhands for Crook's treasure, he always does this. Very good. Yeah, he's got the timing down to a um, muscle memory for when he's throwing down that gold. Loots the ever he does this quite often. He loots the other rampart before getting the right gold. I I think he does it this time. Uh, I don't agree with it because uh, if any piglins come late, you can get them into the hole. Whereas if they come late while well, you're on the other side, you can't get them into the hole. So it's a few more seconds you're spending on this rampart. Um, I don't know why that guy was stuck. He may have forgotten to break the Danny block a little. Uh, no, he did. He definitely did break the Danny block. Uh, he's got three Obby. He needs Obby from here. You know, this is not looking good, even though... So this went downhill very quickly. Unless he rips a lot of trades. He might have to check the lower chest. Oh, wait, no. He's got seven. So yeah, he's he should be, right now he shouldn't be organizing his inventory, he should be getting lower gold because the chances of getting obby, yeah, he's not he's not getting obby from just so few trades. I would keep trading, um, each, each chest down here, there's a, or each, um, side of treasure, and there's eight potential spots for chests, um, two per side, and on the top, the top, ha um, the top group of chests, I guess, um, they are 1 and 3, I want to say, and the bottom ones are 1 and 4. Okay, so he rolls the obby, and this is very, well, not very good pace, but for crooks, even for crooks, this is pretty good pace. Uh, 4 minute bashing loops, not bad. This is a fortress first run. Um, so he has, uh, he should have a lot of blocks at least from mining up the spawner. He's got a gold axe to throw down. Uh, he doesn't really need it anymore because he has blocks. 
And I assume he has wood and he has the stone axe. So could power up right now and eat, but I, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good play waiting. Good play to not craft these, which I believe he does. I don't, I don't think he's gonna craft, yeah, he's not gonna craft a helmet. Toss us down a gold. So that piglin won't hit him because he's distracted by the zombie piglin. He does the, uh, head hitters again. I think they are head hitters. Uh, one small detail you notice. When Crooks is mining out those few blocks right here, when he's mining those, he stands right next to the dirt block, uh, which is smart because you'll, if you don't do that, you will get hit by crossbow pigments. And so he's conserving uh, a little bit of food by doing that. Okay, so now he does the will be lava placement. He, he may have heard a piglin coming from above, and he knows there's zombie piglins, so if any if at any time the zombie piglins move, um, those piglins could clear, they could clear a path. So yeah, like that guy's coming late, replaces the uh, lava, which is really smart. He knows exactly where to stand, which is to get the piglin into the hole the quickest. Um, so this is game knowledge from Crooks uh, at a very high level. He's only got three obby. He should be pearl hanging and looking for further obby right now. He, he has just about everything he needs. He has one ex two explosives, rather. So he, he's probably waiting for that. And he was waiting for a little bit of obby because obby stacks are only four to six. He's got three explosives. Could be checking his cords if he doesn't already know them, but he probably does. So his trades are almost done, so he just decides to leave, which is smart. And it's a, it's a bit of a slow slow bind by his standards. Some sevens, he keeps farming them. And this is not going to be sub seven by quite a bit. He knows this is, what, I guess this is um, lantern chest. He knows exactly how to get to the chest. Mine's a few extra blocks than what he asked you. Okay, so now it's a reset, probably. Next up is... I don't even know where we are. I think we're at this 106.30. Anyway, I won't finish that last Bastion route because it's not great pace. He's probably going to reset at any point. And he's just looking for obby, nothing exciting, nothing to analyze. Okay, uh, this is 141, so we're looking for 158.20. He sees that this is, what is a treasure? Um, so he knows he needs extra blocks again. Even though he's playing it from up high, he wants to get to the very top, so he can... Just, I assume he's just going to play straight up go to the boomer hole. Um, that's fine. That, if you can't get that block placement, always digging a block. Uh, digging a block always works. I should have kept one of those golds in case a uh, 30% chance that there was no gold there. But I guess he gets this gold first. I would have gotten the piglins first. Um, just so that they can start trading earlier because they're not, there's only like four or five of them right now. So getting, feeding them gold is not an issue. They'll, they'll keep trading this for a while. Usually there's at least another four or five piglins stuck when you play it this way. Just because of the Danny block, the other side, uh, the, rather the other rampart. Yeah, so when you go to the other side, I guess that is smart, because when you go to the other side, the piglin from the Danny block sometimes gets stuck, uh, unstuck rather. In 
think he has yeah, seven pearls, plenty of obby. Definitely not playing for 20 here. He's got, I think, zero explosives. Okay, so now he's playing for 20. Yep, he's got 20. I uh, could get another block of gold here, just because he knows they're probably not done trading. Yeah, 12 pearls. He's going to wait. Uh, actually, no, because if you've taken the context, um, it's five minute bastion, he's probably not waiting. Yeah, he's not. He's out of here. He has all four explosives. And that was another fairly decent treasure. Actually, a pretty good treasure from Crooks. This is also another Fortress First run. Um, a bit of a late bash enter for Fortress First if you're Crooks. Um, enters the bridge through the back. This is the right play because the when you see terrain like that and when it's when you've been in the Nether for so long, like three minutes or so, um, those piglins definitely have vacated. And I don't know if you knew that or not, but running through running through the middle was going to be very safe, even um, just because there's bound to be piglins there. Okay, so he gets a little bit less gold than normal. I think one or two blocks less than normal. Um, less than he usually does because this is not great pace for him. Single. Um, so he's playing he's playing Gus or Rainx route. Um, he breaks from a, a block low, which is the lower block, which is good. Um, okay, so... Re just recently I optimized Gus route, and there's a block placement you can do, which is right, oops, the point, it's, you have to, it's a bit tricky because you do it while you're jumping, and it allows you to get maybe a half pig on average more, um, and you place it right below you and to the left right here, right where my mouse is, and piglins are able, piglins from over here and down here are able to climb up. And especially for Fort First, as the piglins have scattered, they often clump up over here because there's no way, they often clump up by the snout because there's no way for them to get back up into this lodestone area once they've gone down to the snout. Um, so they try and path over here and get stuck on this, somewhere over here is, this, is the block on which they get stuck. Um, so placing that block is beneficial. It's prob now that I think about it, it's probably more than half pig. However, I have not tested that. He jumps over and breaks the block first, which is smart. Uh, you can't shift over, you should know that you can't shift over um, the blocks for very long because, especially if I'm on normal or hard mode, the piglins will fall off and they make uh, they go towards a lower area and they push each other off. It's just not consistent. Um, the block he places is not the number one, oops, where was it? Um, 331. The block he places, the extra block he places, other than the four you need to bridge, is not really a necessary one, um, but it helps a little bit. There are two other blocks he should be placing, which are... The, the two blocks he should be placing are right here. There's one of them. I guess three blocks, and... Let me see if I can spot the other two. One right here is another good one. And I believe one right here is also good. Um, it might not be here. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, definitely one here so that they don't fall through. Um, he probably uses the standard hole. I found quite a few holes over the past few months that are better to use. Um, and this new one I found just a few days ago, I think it was yesterday actually, um, it allows for the same chest proximity, and you actually use the same whole location, it's just a bit optimized. So that's smart, he hears those guys, but you don't, uh, unless they're actually stuck up there, you, you just have to pathfind towards those stairs for them to actually pathfind to you. Um, since this is Fort First, he doesn't have as many task overlaps to do. Um, 
Like, it doesn't need to craft a bed for Blaze Bed. He should be crafting his beds. Um, but yeah, he does have to task overlap getting Obby right now. So if he didn't need that Obby, he may have gone for those extra pigs uh, that were down in the Crimson. Okay, so there's no Obby because it's a single. He gets back a block, so this is probably smart. Uh, they only take, they're only about five seconds out of his way. This is looking okay. Yep, this is great. Uh, it's not great pace, but it looks like he's... No, he's not getting the obby. Oh, wait, there we go. Yep, so in all likelihood, he's... It's a high high southern line, which isn't great for him. Um, but he played the Bastion pretty well. Um, but there are still a few optimizations he could have done. However, he probably doesn't know about them. Um... And they're not heavily tested yet, they're very new. Anyway, on to the next Bastion. So he's on Quake Pro, meaning he hasn't spotted it yet, now he spots it. This is, uh... This... I think that's housing, yep. So he elects not to play Manhunt, which I disagree with. Um, I have a few optimizations to Lava, uh, Lava Floor Manhunt, which could help with this, depending on how far the middle is from the ramparts. What I mean by that is uh, how much how much you have to bridge. The more you have to bridge, the worse it is. He does the Will Be Hole. Um, there are a few better holes, but a lot of people are using the Will Be Hole right now. Hydar and very early in the hole. I don't know if he's even hard toggled yet. Um, breaks that block, which isn't necessary, but it speeds up throwing the gold a little bit. Everything he's doing is fine so far mechanically. And his original decision, again, I don't agree with. He could have, he could have at least gotten, maybe, if he's worried about the safety, he could have gotten gold armor from the chest, but I don't think he's worried about the safety. Zombie piglin there, that's not great. Okay, killing that dude may not have been the best decision. Um, so he does, um, let me see, was that x -surf? Yeah, that, I guess that was x -surf, yeah. So x -surfing and housing is useful. Okay, he's got very good trades right now. He just needs one more explosive and he has it. He's looking to leave right now. He, now, he, this is where he's punished, I guess, for not pearl hanging. Yeah, he loses about 5 to 10 seconds not pearl hanging. On to the next Bastion. He sees it, he hasn't... Okay, it's bridge. He should be lowering his FOB now. Um, it's pretty standard of Crooks to lower his FOB. I guess it's better gameplay and you don't need to see much. This is a uh, pretty risky boat clutch, but he's very good at boat clutches. We'll see him use his boat quite often in the nether. So I wouldn't say it's a risky boat clutch, however, if you miss it, you're on pretty good pace and miss out. Okay, this is one thing... I want to talk about crafting a gold helmet and not crafting a pick. It's about a two second time loss depending on the route he's playing here. So let's see what triple he has. He has right triple. So I guess that's fine as you're not digging too many blocks. But if you're playing left triple, you definitely want to craft that gold pick because you're digging at least six blocks, uh, maybe five. Does the... Um, Hoglin skip now. I guess you probably saw Hoglins that time. Okay, so this is my this is one of my bigger pet peeves. Um, people using the high hole. It's not as good. It takes piglins longer to get to. Um, you can sacrifice chest proximity for faster piglin trade start. I don't like the I don't like the high hole at all. Uh, you're losing out on bottom piglins. 
just for a little bit of chest proximity, not no auto funnel or anything. I may work on the high hole for people who actually do it, but yeah, I, I just don't see it fit for a bridge. So now he's, he's bottlenecked by trades, uh, not player actions, meaning looting the chest was not as important as he saw it. See, this is out on those two piglins there. Okay, he has his trades. No, he doesn't. He, sorry, he has his obby. That's about it. He has obby, doesn't have fire res, splits his pearls in three, which with his, how good his inventory management is, um, which it is very quick. He, um, he's, it's fine to split his pearls into three because he has so many extra slots with how much he throws out and how quickly he throws it out. Um, that's, again, why Crooks is one of the best Bastion routers is his task overlap ability. And he's always front-loading, um, front-loading the Tidar and his inventory management is very, very clean. So I, yeah, he doesn't need the golden carrots this time. I didn't see the bread. Um, so that's partially why he didn't craft him at Talus. Well, I guess entirely why he didn't craft him at Talus. Uh, he's ready to go now. Should have pearl hanged again. He had plenty of time. Looks like, um, so yeah, CT and I were talking and CT did point out that um, Crooks struggles a little, bit, a little bit in the pearl hang department and I after watching this I totally agree um, he is not pearl hanging as much as he should be in my opinion okay so this one is pro I think as fast as fast and enter on the list um, I think it's his only sub two. Um, sub twos are, sub two bastion enters are pretty rare, so it's understandable that, you know, this is his only one. And it's bridge, right triple, uh, no left triple, not even a decision. Um, let's see if he does regular Dowski hole. Okay, he goes for a moderate amount of gold. I would have probably gone for a little bit more on this good pace, even if I'm going for sub 10. But I guess he does not have a fortress. Okay, so he goes for, goes for the bad hole again. Especially with this kind of terrain, you really don't want to be doing that. Like, look how many pigs are getting stuck with, with it being such bad terrain. Well, it's not even bad terrain, it's just covered a little bit. And that's another problem with this hole, is piglins getting stuck in the corners. It's a, any disadvantage of a higher hole uh, in any bastion and look at those pigs that he lost this is this is just showing quite a few reasons why you need to play the lower hole or at least a lower hole so it doesn't look like he has much experience with this high hole I guess because he, he doesn't know how to unstick a lot of piglins um, I guess he did know that there were piglins down there, but that's probably from hearing them. Uh, does his Pydar very quickly. It's good that he got the piglins first. And this is turning into about a two minute bastion split. Should Pearl hang right now, uh, depending on which direction it is. I didn't pay attention. He's got everything except for he has he has does he have yeah he's got everything. He's out. 
I don't know why he's still here. Oh, he's waiting for glowstone. I miscounted. Yep, he's got the glowstone. No, he does. He doesn't have the glowstone. He must have the string. Um, but I'm sure a player like Crooks is comfortable, semi comfortable, high rolling uh, for a three bed height. Especially if you have anger. So he has the treasures, he should be looking around. I think I think this was right after he entered, it was a bit of a slow enter for by his standards. And he pretty quickly spots where the bridge is. He has gold helmet. He uses pick block, I think, there. He uses pick block again. At least from what I can see. He's aggroed that guy. It's a bit risky going for this movement. He says he messes up here. Um, I'll turn back on the audio as I forgot to earlier. But he recovers very, very well. Throws down a few more ingots than he needs to, but with, with how uh, how manga s this is, it's fine what he's doing. Everybody uh, misplays their bastions. This is a rare misplay from Crooks. Again, I think he missed, or well, he didn't miss it, but he elected not to go for the he elected not to go for the lower right gold in the right rampart. I would have just killed that guy, you don't need that many in treasure. Yeah, he's got no gold left, there was no point in getting that guy, I don't think he's even gotten chests yet. That's I think just about the only mistake other than his big mistake in the beginning this route. They should be overlapping chests right now. Um, could be reverse E-Ring, but it's common that top runners don't reverse E-Ray, they just high roll. For a fortress in one of the quadrants. He has 21 obby, I didn't even see that. So this is a really good leave. It's a, about a 140 split, I think. He's crafted a bunch of war already. He's got zero cycle, he's just waiting for pearls and he resets. Yep, um, he had no gold left, I was just unlucky. He played that pretty well despite his mistakes. Alright, we've got a low three bastion enter here with one gold ingot and a gold shovel. Um, I think he doesn't usually have his gold on his his gold his shovel on his hot bar, but I guess because um, he's thinking about throwing it away usually, um, that's what you should be thinking about in the bastion throwing it away. It's very good and very planned for boat clutch. Sees bad sees bad gaps, so he's thinking triple right now. Oh no, it's never mind. It's a good gap. Okay, he does his head hitters again. This is not smart. Um, should have just thrown it down his shovel or his gold there. Um, one thing I will say is, you, let me go back to the beginning. Uh, as far as gap, I think I measured it out. From where were we? Six, 45. Um, I measured it out and you should be breaking for left gap uh, about two blocks higher than when where you're standing um, when you're at this ledge right here. Should be breaking or, or punching a pig two blocks higher. Keep in mind when you punch a pig, it's from the pig's position, not your position. So that's why these guys are aggro down. Well, this guy is aggro down here because he did not break high enough, which is fine if you have gold ingots. But if you don't have gold ingots, you really should be focusing on breaking a little bit higher. Does a good auto funnel. Um, it's important that you throw the gold towards the left, and it's not important, but you should be throwing the gold towards the left side of the hole from where you're standing. Does You have to do a very quick pie dar and stable, I think he skipped a gold. I don't know if he knows something about it that it's not there. Um, he missed the pie dar now. 
but it's probably just a, a good high roll. Even though you only have one obby. Yeah, I would have gotten that gold if you don't have any chest obby. Very good. Um, those head hitters are X Surf. I still need to figure out what that is. So he's probably a little disappointed right now because he sees. Well, he's, he's happy that he sees a triple, but disappointed that he didn't get to play it. Um, that, that's enough obby. I wouldn't go for this other triple considering trades are probably done. He's playing for 20 obby or, or consistency or something. Yeah, so he's just playing for a higher chance at rolling trades. I would not have done that. So yeah, du double triple missed. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I, I can't say I would have done anything different. I probably would have played Gap in this situation. Again, with those extra for head hitters. He's got everything. So it looked like that second stack of Obby paid off. Uh, he just needs Fire Rest, doesn't get any. Should have Pearl hanged a little bit higher. Oh, he, he does have Fire Rest, okay. It's not a great Bastion lead, pretty bad actually. Um, but I do believe he has a fork close. Anyway, on to the next route. Another treasure, this is um, low two Bastion Hunter, which is pretty good even though it's treasure. He over front loads blocks, I believe. He does yeah, you don't need that many because you can spend one of your woods, one of his planks, and you can use that block he just mined. Yeah, he got about five to ten too many blocks. Not even ten. Yeah, just five. Shouldn't have uh, right clicked that guy. I would have just gone around him because you're losing that trade and you're also losing aggro on that guy. Uh, speaking of losing aggro. There's some new discoveries as far as punching piglins. Uh, so unlike breaking a block, punching a piglin causes um, any piglins who are on tier 1 aggro, which is simply just not having armor on. So if they see you not having armor on and you break a block, they are still in tier 1 aggro, meaning you are going to lose, they're going to lose aggro once you lose LOS, once they lose line of sight on you. Whereas if you uh, aggro them by uh, punching a piglin, they are not going to lose aggro even if you lose LOS and they had tier 1 aggro so because they upgrade from tier 1 to tier 2 uh, and for the one guy tier 3 once you've punched the piglin. Uh, again, Treasure is one of his strengths. I think his strongest Bastion. So he's, I don't expect him to do anything wrong in this. Um, I probably sound like a broken record when it comes to Treasure. Treasure is definitely um, one of the most consistent bastions as far as uh, what route you play. There are really only a few different routes that are viable at the time. Um, so yeah. Clothing consumption has doubled in the last 15 years. We can change that. Again, sorry about these ads. Um, when we make better, I really don't want to have to edit the video, better. so I'm just going to leave it here. We can wear longer. We wear just longer. Fast forward a little bit. We can buy less. When we buy less. We can waste less. And when we waste less, we can change the good. Back on Paramount Mountain, where entertainment lives. Oh. song from Halo. Oh. He hits his obby there. Um, he's probably not even going to loot the other... No, he does loot the other chest. Um, I probably would not have if I'm playing for such a low time, considering it's treasure and you can't Pygar, and he's out. He doesn't even pearl, will he pearl hang? No. Yep, so it was smart to check for those trades at the end, so it was a pretty quick bash and leave. He has two fire roses, so he splashes one down, and yep, this is good pace now because of a good bash, and it was an average, not even, it was a little bit above average bash to enter. 
but he plays the Bastion enter he plays the Bastion very, very well. Which is pretty standard for his treasures. And I think the next one is the last one. 714. And it's a housing. We can I would play uh, Manhunt, but I know I know pretty well I'm pretty good with Manhunt. Um, as far as optimizing the piglins. Um, punching a piglin there uh, could have been smart. You get a few more piglins, but this is fine. He's going to get plenty of piglins. Piglins won't really be a problem. Uh, he, he did not have to throw down all those gold. He could have just thrown down one to distract them and use the rest once they get into the hole. He uses that hole, okay. Um, so when he's doing top down, I guess he's, he always will use that hole. There's some fast uh, housing holes for top down. I don't know why he did that. Was that just a slow bastion enter? Or an accidental reset? Why did he reset? Fine, fine bastion enter. Oh, no fort. Okay, how we do it. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something new. Um, this was very fun for me to make, aside from the tedious part of finding all the splits at which he entered a bastion. But yeah, I, I really hope you have learned something new and enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.